Hi everyone, welcome back. It's been a long time. I was gonna get this video out to you guys the first couple weeks of January, but I ended up catching COVID and that didn't go as planned. But I'm better now except for the fatigue and the way certain things taste. Um, Pepsi and chicken is a, currently a no-go for me, which breaks my heart. But when we left off, I don't know if I was filming weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, but the last video I was supposed to post, I tried to film it multiple times. It was awkward, so I procrastinated. And then procrastination led to it just not help happening. In the meantime, while all this is going on, my work schedule gets a little crazy. I'm working different shifts, and when I work different shifts, as some of you may know if you've been here a while, I struggle to like clean dishes, laundry. When my schedule's messed up, it messes me up so badly. And I'm definitely not able to get a YouTube video out when I can't function to do normal tasks that need to be done. So, probably the most serious thing that has happened since the last time I've seen you guys was Hurricane Ian. If you've been around for a long, long time, one of the first videos I did was talking about hurricanes, the hurricanes I'd been through. I believe I did it when Hurricane Irma was on her way to Southwest Florida. And I just talked about all the, the hurricanes I've been through. So I've been through Irma, I've been through Charlie, and we had a hurricane after Charlie the year after that it was in October. I just can't remember the name of the hurricane. So I've definitely been through my fair share of, of hurricanes. And when I tell you that Hurricane Ian literally scared the living shit out of me. So, we live in North Fort Myers. We live in a trailer. Cat 4 is on its way. Almost, almost a cat 5. Not smart to stay here. And if you are in a trailer, you should definitely evacuate somewhere. And I understand that people don't always have that option. Some of our neighbors actually stayed here for Ian, and I, I just can't imagine what it was like. But we went to Cape Coral to my mom's, and we literally packed up anything that had any type of value to us, monetary value, sentimental value. It was bagged up, boxed up, and put in my car and taken to my mom's. We get there the night before and you know we're like this is probably our last warm meal we're gonna have for a while so we literally vegged out and just hung out and we went to bed we were up pretty late and by the time we woke up the next morning shit was pretty much start starting to hit the fan for us I was probably up 30 minutes before we lost power and the wind was unimaginable you could hear stuff just hitting the house um, the mom's neighbors had put up the shutters on the house because I was working she was working and my boyfriend was all the way here so her neighbors put the shutters up and they left the bottom two off of the, the slider so that her little puppy dog could still go outside and go go potty and we didn't put those back on and the wind was blowing and then it was blowing up in between the glass and the shutters that were on and it was just vibrating so we pushed a big chair up against the, the sliders and we took turns sitting in the chair and literally pushing with all of our might 
the chair back into the slider because if we didn't do that it was definitely it was gonna come in and then at that point all three of us are taking turns in the big chair and my mom has a weather radio going and people are calling in from Fort Myers Beach talking about there's water in their house to their ceiling coming up into their second floors what do they do begging for help they called 911 and nobody can come my mom and I are kind of like looking at each other like what the fuck are we going to do? What are we going to do if that happens here? Luckily, it didn't. Neighbor's solar panel blew off, hit her roof. That was the only damage she had. She had damage to her roof and her drywall because it caused a leak. Thankfully, that was her only damage because that was our where we were and that was our security during the storm once it started dying down we started two at a time walking down to the end of the street because there was a canal down there and we were looking for water about 10 o'clock there was still no water up because you have the canal and then houses and then a street there was no water from the canal up into the street, so we went to bed. I did not sleep very well at all because I didn't know how it was here. And I was just scared about the storm surge, which storm surge has always kind of been a myth. They talk about it and it, it doesn't happen. But unfortunately, during Hurricane Ian, it did happen. I wake up the next morning after a very, very, very awful night of sleep and we leave to come here. And as we're coming into the area that we live in, I'm just like, are we going to even have a home now? We pull up and the first thing we see is we have a wooden deck and there's aluminum roof and screen around. A uh, big tree had fallen on that, and we thought it was just the screen enclosure. So we go up on the porch, try to come in the front door, bottom lock unlocks, the bolt lock does not budge. So we go around the back, we come inside, and the tree had come in through the living room. There was water in the house, everything that was fabric was destroyed. Um, so I wasn't able to get a hold of our property manager, so we started getting our stuff out of here because we really didn't think we were going to ever live here again. And on the very last trip with our stuff and my car headed to my mom's, my car overheat and it broke. It had to be towed. It had to be fixed. Just, just to add to my... So we get our last load to my mom's and we're starting to go through stuff and figure out, you know, what we can keep and what's trash. And we get a call from a property manager. We come out here and she tells us that she can get this fixed. They're looking at a week. Well, it ended up being like two and a half weeks, but we're back. We've shopped. We've replaced everything that we needed. Um, as FEMA said, to live as we were before this storm. And everything here is good, but we were very, very, very lucky. People in my neighborhood completely lost their homes. The Barrier Islands took a very, very, very bad beating. Fort Myers Beach, there's like nothing left there. Everything's gone, which is very sad. A lot of people lost their lives, and Fort Myers Beach was iconic. There was a lot of damage in Sanibel. 
I haven't seen a whole lot of pictures from Sanibel, but the Sanibel Causeway, some parts of it were actually washed away. Uh, Matt Lachey, St. James City, Boquilla had a lot of damage. They're one of our other barrier islands, but they're not a, a, a beach island. They had a lot of damage and there was a lot of people coming to try to loot the areas in that island um, the night after the storm happened. So those people in those communities were definitely not safe, but from the stories I've heard, they were able to hold their own. <clears throat> Fort Myers Beach is starting to clean up. Um, if you go to Google and you look at what Fort Myers Beach was before and what it looked like after the storm and what it looks like now, there's huge drastic differences in all the pictures. They're starting to open restaurants. There's food trucks down there. Um, at Christmas time, they still put the Christmas tree in Times Square. So they are actively rebuilding. I haven't been hearing a whole lot of about it, Sanibel. And the stories that I'm hearing about Matt Lachey, um, a lot of people that lost their homes are living in tents on their property. So overall, unfortunately, we had a lot of devastation in, in Florida during Hurricane Ian. And, you know, it's not our first hurricane. Charlie actually came in round about the, the same spot Ian did and the wind speeds were about the same but the difference is Hurricane Charlie was moving a lot faster than Hurricane Ian was. I've been told that Hurricane Ian actually stalled out over Fort Myers Beach and Cape Coral. We had immense winds and it was very scary but what happened to me and what I went through with the storm was nothing compared to the people that lost their houses, <clears throat> lost their businesses, and lost their lives. Sorry, I had to take a moment. <clears throat> but that's where we are at locally after Hurricane Ian. It's the scariest fucking thing in my life. I'm not even exaggerating when I say that. Um, but the, the next thing that happened, <clears throat> so we moved back home, we get everything set up and like I'm driving to work and back and towards the end of my trip, my car is overheating and I just don't understand why there's nothing wrong with it. There's coolant in it. It passes a pressure test. Now, there were recalls on my car. There were old recalls. My ABS light module was on. My brake light, my traction control light was on from an ABS module failure. Right after Hurricane Ian, we got a recall card that finally had it on there. So, Yes, I procrastinated a little bit after getting that card. <clears throat> Somebody comes and looks at my car and tells me that my transmission is not shifting. I don't remember what it was, second, third gear. So the engine's working harder and causing it to overheat. And I'm like, now my car. And I'm, you know, I wonder if, I take my car in for these recalls if you know this is from that one person tells me yes it's your ABS brake module sending all kinds of crazy codes and they fix that that will be fixed there was also a communications recall so I take it in <clears throat> there's a six recall on my car for the catalytic converter because they changed that out they reprogrammed my pcm got the car back 
everything's fine now with that. But my car was at the dealership for two weeks. So once again, I'm not home. I'm back at my mom's. I think the first month and a half we were home, I counted the days since Hurricane Ian that I was actually here, living here, and it was like three weeks. But I wasn't home, I was at my mom's a lot, so I wasn't going to, you know, do videos. <clears throat> but before I took my little break, I did see that this video was getting pretty long, and at this point I feel like I'm kind of getting rambly. So, <clears throat> we'll just get to my last point, and I'll see you guys next month, which is very, very close. But, if you've been here for a while, I feel like I've said that a hundred times in this video, and I'm sorry. But you will know that I have some videos missing. A lot of them I want to do redo because I feel like I can do them better. Much, much, much better. Some of the videos I don't like stuff I said. Some of my true crime videos I just kind of reported the facts and didn't put my opinion in there and actually because I did that in my video with Larry and Rebecca Fenton like I got ripped apart in the comment section so I'm like I honestly I could have done a better job on this video with my addiction videos I filmed them when I was like six months clean I can sit here now and be like I had no business even like sitting down and doing that I can handle those subjects and those topics so much better now. <clears throat> so I made them disappear and a lot of them I'm going to redo. Some of them I won't revisit at all, but the ones that are more important and I feel like I can redo a lot better, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, but going forward, we're going to do one video a month, one video a month. I don't want to get myself overwhelmed. Um, if I have an awkward video that I'm trying to film, I want to try to give myself time to get that done because I will procrastinate if I sit down to film a video and it's just awkward and I'm having a hard time. I can promise you, I will, I will procrastinate. So it just gives me a little more of a window till I get back in the swing of things. I would love to be doing a video every week couple times a week. I would love it, but that's just not in the cards for me right now. I haven't published a video consistently in years, so that's where we're at. Hopefully we'll get back there one day, but that's all I have for you guys. This video is long enough. It seems like YouTube likes shorter videos now, so I'm gonna go and I will see you February. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell because I don't have a regular schedule right now. So if you want to see my videos, make sure you do that. And I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye.